Hello, my name is Corey Huggins, and today I will be doing the physical assessment for NR509. And I'm Joshua Huggins, and I consent to the filming and submission of this video to Chamberlain College. Thank you. First, we're going to begin by doing an environment scan. All right, now we can get started. Okay, I'm gonna begin by um, inspecting Josh. I noticed that his face, there's no obvious discolorations or lesions. His head is symmetric and midline. And I'll begin by palpating the lymph nodes. Josh, if you have any tenderness as we go, just let me know. The pre-auricular in front of the ear, the post-auricular behind the ear, the occipital in the back of the head, tonsillar, submandibular and submental the anterior cervical posterior cervical and the supraclavicular lymph nodes about the clavicle and I don't notice any enlargements along those lymph nodes Josh did you have any tenderness no okay good I'm gonna move on to test cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal nerve. It does have a motor component. So I'm going to place my hands on the masseter muscle and ask Josh to clench his jaw for me. Good. And there's good bilateral strength there. So the motor component is intact. Next, the sensory portion of the trigeminal nerve. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes, Josh, and um, let me know where I'm touching you. Forehead, right cheek, left cheek, nose, chin. Good, you cor uh, correctly identified all of those areas. So the sensory portion of the trigeminal nerve is intact. Um, we'll move on to the facial nerve, which is cranial nerve number seven. I'm gonna ask Josh to perform a series of facial expressions. First, go ahead and give me a big smile. And I note that that is symmetric. Um, frown for me. Good, raise your eyebrows. Puff out your cheeks and pucker your lips. Okay. okay, all of those movements are symmetric. Next, I'm going to inspect Josh's ears. I noticed that they are symmetric. There's no obvious lesions or um, deformities. And I'll begin by looking in the auditory canal with my otoscope. And as I do this, I'm going to pull the pinna up and back to best visualize the canal. Okay, I see that the auditory canal is free from any redness or swelling. There's no abnormal discharge or cerumen obstructing the view. And the tympanic membrane is a pearly gray with no effusion in the middle ear. Okay, and we'll repeat it on the other side. Again, I will pull the pinna up and back. And looking in the auditory canal, I do see that there is no redness, there's no cerumen, there's no discharge or lesions, and the tympanic membrane is a pearly gray with no effusion in the middle ear. Good. All right. Next, I will um, palpate the pinna on each side for any tenderness or nodules. Any tenderness there, Josh? No. All right. And the tragus, which is in front of the ears. Any tenderness there? No. And no nodules that I feel there. Good. Next, I will move on to assess cranial nerve number eight, which is the acoustic nerve. And I will do this by, um, I'm going to ask Josh to cover his left ear. And I'm gonna whisper three words into his ear. And Josh, if you could just repeat those for me. One, two, three. Thank you. Four, five, six. Good. Josh correctly identified those words. So cranial nerve number eight is intact. Next, I will move on to inspect Josh's eyes. On either side, I do note that the conjunctiva is pink and moist. The sclera is white and clear. And I will 
begin assessing cranial nerve number two, which is the optic nerve. We'll assess central vision first using the pocket Snell and eye chart. I'm gonna stand six feet away and Josh, I'm gonna ask you to cover one eye for me and read the lowest line possible. L-T-F-P-H. Good, and cover the other eye. L-T-F-P-H. Now with both eyes. L-T-F-P-H. Perfect, Josh has 20-20 vision in his left and right eye and with both eyes. Next, I will assess for um, peripheral vision, which is another component, <clears throat> excuse me, of optic nerve, which is cranial nerve number two. I'm gonna ask you to stand for me, Josh. And look a little bit closer to me. All right, and I'm gonna, can you see my hands? No. All right, I'm gonna move my fingers towards you. Let me know when you can see my hands. Now. Good. Can you see my fingers? No. Let me know when you can see them. Now. Good. And can you see my hands now? No. Let me know when you can see them. Now. Good. Perfect. Peripheral vision is intact. Next, I will um, check for the last portion of cranial nerve number two, which is the optic nerve. Checking for pupillary response. I'm going to ask you, Josh, to look at my nose. I'm going to come in from the side with my light source. Good. And turn around. So the pupils are equally reactive to light bilaterally, and they are a three plus millimeters um, bilaterally. All right, next I'm going to check cranial nerves three, four, and six, respectively. Three is the ocular motive nerve, four is the trochlear nerve, and six is the abducens nerve. And together they control the extraocular movements of the eye. So Josh, I'm gonna have you just look straight for me. You're gonna follow my finger as I make an H pattern and just follow with your eyes, leave your head still. Good, perfect. So the extraocular movements of the eye are intact, which is cranial nerves three, four, and six. Next, I will move on to the nose. I noticed that Josh's nose is symmetric and midline, there's no obvious fractures. I'm going to take my otoscope to visualize the inside of the nose here. I'm going to have you tilt your head slightly back. I'm going to tip his nose up with my, my thumb slightly so I can best visualize inside the nose. Looking inside, I do note that laterally the turbinates are pink and intact and moist. There's no um, abnormal drainage. Medially, I note that there is a um, intact septum, it's not deviated, and it is pink and moist. Let me look on the other side here. Good, laterally the turbinates are pink and moist. Medially the septum is pink and moist with no deviation and no abnormal drainage on that side either. Okay, next I'm going to palpate the sinuses beginning with the frontal sinuses. Josh, let me know if you have any tenderness there. Any tenderness there? No. And the maxillary sinuses. Any tenderness no. there? Good. All right, next I'm gonna move on to um, inspect Josh's mouth. I noticed on inspection that his lips are moist and pink, and I'm gonna get my white source. I'm gonna have you open your mouth for me, Josh. Good. All right, on inspection, I note that there are no obvious signs of dental decay, there's no cracks. His lips are a healthy pink and moist. There's no bleeding. The buccal mucosa on each side of the mouth is pink and moist. There's no obvious lesions. And lift your tongue up for me. Good. There's no abnormal discharge, drainage, no lesions under the tongue. And it is as well a healthy pink and moist. Put your tongue down for me. The tongue is pink and smooth. The hard palate is hard and soft palate, excuse me, are intact, and that is pink and moist also, no lesions up there. And the posterior pharynx is pink, um, it is moist, and Josh does not have any tonsils, otherwise I would grade his tonsils. Thank you. Okay, next I will assess cranial nerves nine and 10. Cranial nerve nine is the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the gag reflex, and for the purposes of this exam, we will not be assessing that today. Cranial nerve number 10 is the vagus nerve. And to um, assess this, Josh, I'm gonna ask that you open your mouth. 
And stick your tongue out and say ah. Uh. Good. And I do know that the uvula and the soft palate both rise symmetrically with phonation. Cranial nerve number 12 we'll test now is the hypoglossal nerve. To do so, I'm gonna ask you, Josh, to stick your tongue straight out and move side to side. Good, he does that well symmetrically. There's no deviations there with good strength. Um, so cranial nerve number 12 is intact. All right, next I'm going to assess the um, tempomandibular joint. I'm gonna place my hand here. And Josh, you can open and close for me. Any pain when you do that? No. And I know that I don't feel any clicks or tenderness or crepitus there. So next I'm going to assess Josh's neck. I notice that it is midline, it doesn't appear to be any deviation. The trachea as well is midline, there's no deviations there. And I will move on to palpate the thyroid. In doing so, I will first locate the cricoid cartilage top and the suprasternal notch on the bottom. And between these two landmarks, I will place my fingers. I'm gonna to retract to one side and go ahead and swallow for me, Josh. Good, and I am noting um, how the thyroid rises as he swallows and there's no abnormal borders. It's normal in size, I don't feel any nodules. And I will retract on the other side, go ahead and swallow for me again. Good, perfect. And again, it rises symmetrically. I don't feel any abnormal borders or lesions there. Next, I will palpate the carotid arteries on either side of the neck, one at a time. Good. Good, and those are equal bilaterally and both bounding. Next, I will auscultate the carotid arteries. I'm gonna ask Josh to take a deep breath and hold it as I auscultate, as I don't want the breath sounds to obscure any um, sounds that I may hear. And I'm going to auscultate with the bell of my stethoscope so that I can hear any breweries that might be present. All right, Josh, go ahead and take a deep breath for me and hold. Good, take a breath. All right, take a deep breath for me and hold. Good, you can breathe. Okay, I don't notice any breweries with bilateral either carotid. Okay, I'm gonna test for cranial nerve number 11, which is the spinal accessory nerve. In doing so, I'm gonna place resistance on Josh's shoulders with my hands and ask you to shrug your, shrug your shoulders. Good, nice equal strength there. So that cranial nerve is intact. Next, I will assess for active range of motion of the neck. Josh, I'm gonna ask you to flex your neck by pushing your chin to your chest. Good, and extend your neck by looking up at the ceiling. Good, rotate by putting your chin over one shoulder. Good, and the other way. Good, and then lateral flexion, put your ear to your shoulder and the other side. Good, perfect, so um, range of motion of the neck is intact. Next, I will move on to listening to the heart sounds. First, I'm going to listen with the uh, diaphragm of my stethoscope, and then I'll go back and listen with the bell as well. So I'm gonna begin in the aortic area, which is the second intercostal space at the right sternal border, pulmonic area, second intercostal space, left sternal border, herbs point, third intercostal space, left sternal border, tricuspid area, fourth intercostal space, left sternal border, and the mitral area, fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. Good, and I don't notice any um, murmurs or gallops or abnormal heart sounds there. So I'll go back and repeat again with the bell of my stethoscope. Aortic area, second intercostal space, right sternal border. Pulmonic area, second intercostal space, left sternal border. Herbs point, third intercostal space, left sternal border. Tricuspid area, fourth intercostal space, left sternal border. 
And finally, the mitral area, the fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. And again, I don't hear any murmurs or gallops or abnormal heart sounds. Okay, next I will move on to um, inspecting Josh's chest. I noticed that with respirations, there's even rise and fall of the chest. There doesn't appear to be any obvious deformities. I'm going to um, listen to the anterior lung sounds beginning at the intercostal spaces. All right, just going to take some normal deep breaths in. Breath sounds are present bilaterally in all fields and there are no adventitious breath sounds. Next, I'm going to assess, auscultate, excuse me, the posterior lung fields to do so. I'm gonna ask you to stand this way. And turn this way. Perfect. And I'm gonna begin this above the clavicles. Which feels normal for me. And I'll make sure to include the lateral right middle lobe. Good. All right, you can have a seat for me. The breath sounds posteriorly are present in all fields equally, um, and there are no adventitious breath sounds there. All right. Next, I'm going to move on to assessing Josh's upper extremities. I'm gonna have you place your hands flat on your lap here. And in looking at his hand joints, I notice that there is no redness or swelling. Is there any pain in your joints? No. Okay. And I will assess capillary refill by taking the fingernail of one hand here and pressing down on the nail bed until it turns white. And I'll release, and that does turn back pink in less than three seconds. I'll take a finger here, press down until it turns white, and it turns back to pink in three seconds. So the capillary refill is less than three seconds, um, which is a normal finding. All right, I'm gonna have you place your hands like that as I assess the radial pulses on both sides. Good, and those are two plus equal bilaterally. Okay, I'm going to have you squeeze my hand and this, uh, assess the strength of your grip. Squeeze, squeeze. Good. That's five out of five grip strength bilaterally. All right, next I'm going to assess the uh, range of motion passively of the elbow. I'm going to flex the elbow and extend. And while I'm here, I'm going to, if you could put your arms with your palms facing you, I'm going to assess the strength of the bicep and triceps muscles bilaterally. I'm going to ask you, Josh, pull me into you. Good. And push against me. Good. Nice five out of five strength bilaterally for the biceps and triceps. Next, I'm going to assess passive range of motion of the shoulder. I'm going to flex the shoulder, extend the shoulder internal rotation, external rotation, abduction, and adduction. That's good. Nice range of motion is intact for the shoulder. Okay, next I'm going to assess cerebellar coordination by performing two rapid movement tests. First, Josh, I'm going to have you Hold your hands up and you're going to touch your index finger to your thumb, next finger, there you go. Perfect. And we'll increase the speed on that. And he has good coordination in doing that. Next, I'm going to have you place your hands on your thigh and you're going to flip over and back on and increase the speed with that. 
Good, perfect. So cerebellar coordination is intact. Next, I'm going to assess the deep tendon reflexes using my rubber mallet. First, I'm gonna assess the bicep tendon reflex, excuse me, I'm gonna support Josh's arm with my arm, and I'm gonna place the thumb of my hand in the medial aspect of the antecubital fossa, and I'm gonna use the pointy side of my mallet to briskly strike my thumbnail. Good, it's a nice two plus brisk response with that. I'm gonna have you hang your leg. There you go. And I'm gonna use the flat side of my mallet to locate just below the patella. Good, good two plus brisk response with that. And I'm gonna adjust the camera slightly so we can see the Achilles. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna have you relax your foot, Josh, and I'm gonna slightly dorsiflex his foot as I strike his Achilles tendon with the flat aspect of my mallet here. Good, good for, um, pronation with that, two plus risk response. Okay. Adjust the camera here. All right. And Josh, I'm gonna have you move to the bed. We're gonna start the abdominal exam. He's gonna move the chair out of the way and I'm going to adjust the camera so that we have the best angle possible. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna slightly expose his abdomen. Scoot towards me just a little bit. There you go, perfect. And I'm gonna inspect his abdomen, looking for any contour, or looking for contour and symmetry. I notice that the abdomen is flat. There's no obvious masses or swelling. I will first begin by auscultating in all four quadrants for bowel sounds. Bowel sounds are present in all four quadrants and normoactive. Next, I will auscultate for the presence of any breweries with the, um, over the arteries. I'll begin with the aortic area, which is just below the xiphoid process in the midline. And in doing so, I will use the bell of my stethoscope as we do to locate breweries. Next, I will auscultate the renal arteries, which are above the umbilicus on the lateral aspects of the abdomen. So I'll do the left lateral above the umbilicus for the left renal artery, and above the umbilicus right lateral for the right renal artery. And finally, the iliac arteries are below the umbilicus um, to the left, or to lateral, excuse me, lateral side. So I'll begin with the left lateral iliac artery below the umbilicus and the right iliac artery below the umbilicus. And I do not hear any breweries over those arteries. Okay, next I will percuss the abdomen for any tympany, dullness, or flatness. and I don't hear any abnormal tympany, um, dullness, or flatness. Next, I will begin by palpating the abdomen for any masses or tenderness. Josh, if you feel any tenderness during the exam, just let me know. Okay, any tenderness there? No. Good, and I did not notice any um, masses on that exam. Okay, next I will assess the Bloomberg sign, which I'm gonna take my hand at a 90 degree angle and come directly into the abdomen, checking for any rebound tenderness, which would indicate a positive rhombus. Any pain doing that? No. Okay. Any pain doing that? No. Okay, so that is a negative um, Bloomberg sign. 
All right, next I'm going to assess the, try to palpate the liver and the spleen. First, I will start with the liver. I'm gonna take my left hand and place it behind the patient to support. And I'm gonna take my right hand with my palm down and come in right at the costovertebral angle. And take a deep breath for me, Josh. And I'm gonna push up and in. Trying to palpate the, and I don't feel the border of the liver at all, which is actually a normal finding. Next, I will bend the knees slightly turn towards me. There you go. Attempt to palpate the spleen on the left side. Again, I will, I'm gonna come this way, place my left hand behind the patient and take my right hand, you can see me, and come in at the costovertebral angle. Take a deep breath from me, Josh. And inward and upwards down and I do not feel the spleen which is a normal finding okay all right that concludes our abdominal exam all right next I'm going to check for passive range of motion of the knee I'm going to flex the knee and extend the knee so range of motion is intact in there I'm gonna test the strength of both knees. So Josh, I'm gonna have you draw your knees up into you. Good, and press backwards, good. And pull me in, good. Nice five out of five strength with both of the knees. Next, I will um, test for range of motion passively of the hip. I'm going to bend the knee and in turn, will flex the hip. For this exam, we're not going to extend the hip but I will you know, internal rotation, external rotation, abduction, out, and adduction, in. Good, the range of motion is intact. All right, next I will assess for range of motion of the ankle by, I'll dorsiflex the foot and Planner flex, excuse me, I'm sorry. Dorsiflex the foot, planner flex the foot, and rotate the ankle. The range of motion of the ankle is intact. Next, I will assess for strength of the ankle by, all right, Josh, pull your ankles in up towards me, your feet, good. And press down like you're driving a car, good. Nice five out of five strength in bilateral ankles. I will assess for um, the dorsalis pedis pulses on both sides and good. Those are two plus equal and bilateral. And I do no, um, no edema on either leg bilaterally and no discoloration or abnormal lesions of any sort. Okay, all right, Josh, I'm gonna have you stand back up for me. And I'm gonna move the camera back. So we move on to the next part of the exam. All right, I'm gonna have you turn this way towards me. And I'm going to inspect the spine. I'm gonna palpate for any tenderness, looking for any abnormal curvatures or misalignment, any step off, which I'm not feeling. Any tenderness when I do that, Josh? No. Good. All right. And I'm going to have you, we're going to test active range of motion of the spine. I'm going to have you flex by bending over as you're touching your toes. Good. And come back up for me. And extend by leaning backwards, looking up at the ceiling. Good. Have you rotate to each side. And to the other side. Good. And lateral flexion, um, go down the side of your hip towards your knee. Good, just like that. And the other side. Good, he doesn't have any difficulties in doing that. Um, range of motion of the spine is intact. Next, I will um, assess the Romberg sign, which I will have him stand. I'm going to just turn slightly this way. Um, with your eyes closed, and I'm assessing for any swaying or balance issues. We'll have him stand this way for about 20 seconds. Good, and I do not notice any.
swaying or coordination issues. Next, I'm going to assess his gait. I'm gonna have you take a couple steps for me. Good, and come back. Good, he has a nice, steady, normal gait. All right, and that does conclude our physical exam for NR509. Josh, thank you for your participation.